In today's episode, you will be coming along with us as we share one of our favorite things to do in a new city. We do this everywhere we go and today's the day you do it with us. So what is it? Well, we like to walk out our front door and say, which way, left or right? And then just go and see what we can find. Well, on this day, we went left and walked along Via Corso, the main road that used to be a horse racing track. Listen as we come across the gigantic Piazza Popolo with the three basilicas and Egyptian obelisks, three fountains and the impressive original city gates. From there, we take you with us up a marble staircase that leads up to the highest point in the city of Rome, the Pincian Hill, which has amazing views of the city. Apparently, Rome has a thousand churches and you can see a lot of the domes of those churches from this vantage point. Of course, that wasn't all there was on this hill. Come with us as we wander around the stunning, enormous Borghese Gardens. You know I love gardens. You will hear about the lakes with islands in the middle that you can row around to see the temples, hear about all the galleries with more stunning centuries-old art, and then Lyle tells you about the original water clock. Yep, a water clock. From there, we will take you down the most stunning street in Rome. It's just like a movie set, Via Vittorio Veneto. Even sounds like a movie. And this goes all the way down to the famous fountain. No, not the Trevi yet, but a fountain designed by Bernini of Triton spurting a jet of water into the air through a shell and being held up by four dolphins in Piazza Barberini. Next on our walking journey was another amazing piazza, Piazza Chirinale, which is the official residence of the President of the Italian Republic. Of course, our day would not be complete if we didn't visit the Trevi Fountain and it was just as beautiful as you can imagine. 26 metres high and 49 metres wide. Oh, it was beautiful. But stay listening to the end to hear about the last place we went on our journey, our walking loop around Rome, which involves Spain, France, and Tom Cruise. Hmm. Make sure you subscribe or follow us on the podcast player you are listening on now so you are the first to know when our next Italian episode is published. So please enjoy episode 67. Cheers and welcome to the Beach Travel Wine podcast. We are your hosts, I'm Leanne and I'm Lyle and this is the travel podcast for beach loving wine drinking couples over 50. So if that sounds like you, grab yourself a drink, sit back, relax and listen as we go travelling the world one wine at a time. Cheers. Buongiorno, Lyle. Ciao, baby. Here we are once again in the uh, podcast studio and today I'm excited because we are going to be talking about one of the favourite things we like to do when we travel, yeah? Yeah, I think is that what you when you say we walk the city? Yeah, well, we like to... You know, obviously we've done lots of tours and we find out all this information, but one of our favourite things to do is walk out our front door and say, which way, left or right? Sure. And that's what we did today. And it ended up being like a, a huge sort of loop, a walking loop, and we discovered so many things on the way which we're going to fill you in. But um, tell tell um, everyone what happened when we walked out that, um, that day into our little dingy, you know, cobblestone street. Yeah, well, we, uh, we actually... Uh took uh, the turn and turned right and f- extraordinarily we the thing that we noticed which had we hadn't noticed before is all the shutters were up and we were surrounded by um art galleries beautiful art galleries and expensive watch shops and we'd been there a couple of days and and that the shutters had been down okay. and then and they've got graffiti on them and, you know, they've yeah, the got shutters, all these motorbikes yeah. parked in front of them. So we had no idea. Yeah, so. but the, and it would look very, <laughs> very, very exclusive. So we've gone from thinking we're in a dingy area to um, upmarket, yes? Sure. Yeah, yeah. And so you said we went right. I thought we went left. <laughs> You're probably right because you reckon I get lost in the corridor. So <laughs> I'll text the wrong, yeah, turn in, in the hallway, I'd say. So, yeah, let's say we went left. Okay. Yeah, and we ended up at... Um, the the via del corso which is like Correct. that main road right yep yep yeah and that's, tell us about that because that's interesting yeah it, it's a it's probably the one of the most famous streets in in rome and it's uh it goes for about one and a half k yeah and it's uh bordered at one end with the um piazza uh, piazza uh, venisa 
Venezia. Venezia. Yeah. Venezia, yeah. And yeah. at the other end, it's uh, Piazza Popolo. Okay. Um, and we decided we were going to go to Piazza Popolo. Yeah, hmm. because but, that's where the one of the entrances is to the Borghese Gardens. Which is what I wanted to go and yes, see. Yes, she did. But, but the, um, the Via del Corso, you know, like it's about, one, as you said, one half kilometres long between those two main plazas and the, the Piazza Venezia is sort of up towards the Colosseum end and um, the other one, as you said, is Popolo. But it used to be... Um, back in, you know, like in, I don't know, 15th century or something, wasn't there like a race that went on yeah. there? Yeah. Uh, the road served as a race track during the Roman Carnival for an annual running of riderless horses. Right. Uh, and that was At least called, it wasn't headless horses. <laughs> and it was called the Corsa de Barbary, yeah. um, which is the source of the name of Via del Corso now. Look, it's, it's, it's a really quite up market street it's yes. got all the big brands and all the big names and and um a, also there's there's lots of churches i think they i counted six, six it, churches or something yeah wasn't and the, this the, is in one and a half kilometers <laughs> yeah and the gallery alberto sorti which was a he was a, a famous italian actor and that's basically a gallery like the one in the land mm. uh so there's also restaurants yeah there's there. restaurants look it's it's pretty there's also the 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 palazzo of gigi and mm. i'm not sure whether i said that That'll Probably, do. but that's as actually the residence of the serving Italian Prime Minister. And the Piazza Colonna with the ancient column of Marcus Aurelius yeah, so we, is towards the centre. We came across that because it's not far from where we were. That's one of the first things we saw. And um, I'm just like, what the heck's this, right? Because it's, it's huge and uh, it's covered in decoration, yeah? Yeah, look, it's uh, he, Marcus Aurelius was... Uh, Emperor foot- from 161 yes. to 180 AD. Right. Uh, he was also known as a, a Stoic philosopher. Uh, and just excuse me, if I have this right, he was the good guy in the movie Gladiator. Yeah, yeah. he was. He, he was, was the, the father of the bad guy. Commodus. Yeah. Okay. Commodus, yeah. 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 Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah, I've got the right guy. Yes. And, uh, and in the movie, uh, his son uh, strangled him yeah. uh, or suffocated him, but in real life that didn't actually okay. happen. Sorry, get back um, to your Marcus Aurelius column. Yeah, so the column is a Doric column featuring spiral relief. It was built in honour of the Roman Emperor mm-hmm. and modelled on Tarjan's column. There's another column which is similar, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty much the same. The column is 39.7 metres or 130 feet high, yeah. consists of 28 blocks of Carrera marble hollowed out for a stairway of 200 steps within the column up to the platform at the top. That's that, um, yeah, I needed to go back and have a look at the photos I took of that because it just looked like a, a obelisk when I thought about it. But when you go back and, and you know, like have a look at it, yeah, to have the, <laughs> I didn't realise it was so big that it had the, the stairs inside it. Yeah, yeah. and the, the spiral picture, Relief, mm. tells the story of Marcus Aurelius, Danubian wars waged by him from 166 till his death. Mm. Um, but yeah, my favourite quote from Marcus Aurelius, I've actually read his whole book. Actually, it was your son, Cody, gave yes. it to me. Yes. Thanks, Codes. And uh, it's called Meditations. And um, <laughs> what are you laughing well, at? Why you, are you laughing I'm at that? La- I'm laughing because Lyle and meditation just don't go together. But anyway, go on. Well, it's it's actually not a like a, a story. It's just uh, his thoughts yes. that came to him. So quotes, then, really. Some yeah, of them are quotes, pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, one of my favourites is you have to you have power over your mind, not outside events. Mm. And the five main things of, of uh, Stoic philosophy. Oh, okay. So that's what he was. So, yeah. Yep, okay. Is uh, yes. change, yes. death, and the shortness of life. Right. Second is the role of the importance of a rational mind. Yes. Three, dealing with others and accepting their shortcomings. You do that all, <laughs> you do that all the time for me, so you're up there. Uh, avoiding the chase for pleasure and fame. Oh. <laughs> Neither is sure about that. And uh, living according to the nature and fully accepting its course. Fair enough. Yeah, so if we run out of money, we run out of money. Right. There you okay. go. Well, we're giving it a, a, a good crack. So. Yeah, so, but it, yeah, it is impressive. And the fact that it, it goes up and there's a staircase inside, mm. or, 
and yeah. it gets thinner and thinner towards the top. Yeah, yeah. I'd love that, wouldn't I? Yeah. Uh, so the, the, the Via del Corso, um, it's uh, at one end, at, especially at the end of the day, there's a lot of people walking. Even though cars do drive up that way, it's mainly pedestrian, I think you'd say, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I think on the weekends, actually close yeah. it to traffic. So so we've walked out our door. Lyle's gone right. I've gone left. We've met at Via del Corso and we've we've seen the, the um, column of Marcus Aurelius, all the shops and churches and galleries and that sort of stuff. And um, We have arrived at the Piazza yeah. del Popolo. You can't miss it. It's huge. Yeah. It's probably the biggest square I've ever seen. Yeah, like 17,000 square metres. Square metres. Yep. Huge, like absolutely gigantic, yeah? And yeah. the way we came out, we came out in between these two churches. Like They're like twins on each other. Yeah, side. they are. They, they call them the twin churches. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, well, there yeah, you go. Yeah. And then there's the um, the obelisk, and uh, that's huge. And the yes. obelisk is an authentic Egyptian treasure. It was brought to Rome by Emperor Augustus in 10 BC yeah. to honour the Roman Empire's quest of Egypt. And so that's actually got the inscriptions on it, the yeah. Egyptian. I so think it's, there's more. It's actually, it's actually quite, don't, it's don't, genuine. Sorry, you don't need to go to Egypt. You know, just go to Rome because, you know, if you want to see an Egyptian obelisk, they're all in Rome. Yes. Yeah, and the churches, <laughs> the, the twin churches are the Santa Maria del Miracoli and the Santa Maria in Monte Santo. Oh. Uh, most impressive fountain, Neptune's uh, fountain depicts Neptune with his triton and two dolphins. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Now, there's also another pretty famous church there called the Santa Maria del Popolo. Oh, that's the one they reckon is haunted. Yes, that's correct, because it was built on Emperor Nero's, Nero's uh, grave. tomb. Yeah, tomb. grave. Yeah. And he, he, was, he was weird. Yeah. He killed his mother because oh. he was having an affair and she wasn't keen on it, and then he committed suicide. Oh, and then he also built a big bath. He did, he did. He <laughs> Which did. is in the Vatican. <laughs> yeah, and uh, the church contains two famous Caravaggio paintings and your, Rome's your oldest stained glass windows. Oh, I didn't know that. And also at the Piazza del Popolo, this 17,000 square metre massive, is the ancient city gates. Correct, yeah, 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 yeah. from the northern, the northern gate. Yeah, 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 so that sort of lines up with the um, Via del Corso, doesn't it? Correct. Yeah. That's exactly right. So yeah. it's certainly worth, uh, and that wasn't the the plaza wasn't piazza wasn't sort of on our list of things to do. But I'm so glad we went we went to see that. Yeah. Was, yeah. yeah well, was, was if, impressive. You, if you remember, we, we went for a walk the night before, and we actually saw it was actually set up for a radio yeah, station a concert. Rock concert. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, because we don't speak Italian, well, we thought the was pointless staying so but yeah look it's very impressive if you've listened to any of our previous podcasts uh you would know that i love a garden don't i yes you do and one of the things i wanted to explore was this big green area um in above the uh, piazza del popolo and it's called the borghese gardens right yes yes and you know, I know a lot. Should I say C? C. Um, and they're actually uh, on top of the hill, which is the Pinchian Hill. I think yeah, that's correct. Right. Yeah. Pinchian Hill, yeah, and we, that's the that's the highest point in uh, Rome. In Rome, yeah. yeah okay. And in the city of Rome, anyway. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Um, and it, and the Borghese Gardens covers uh, eighty hectares. It, yeah. Huge. C. C. Um, and it was from. From 1606, it was converted from an old vineyard. Yeah, that's yeah, weird. that's correct. From by Cardinal Scipione Borghese. <laughs> Scipione. Scipione Borghese. I'm getting good at this. I'm, we're going to have about 20 <laughs> bloody Italian uh, podcasts, and by the end of it, I'm going to sound like I'm Italian. I'm there sure. There we go. Um, so the thing I first noticed about when we, because we walked up this big sort of sweeping marble staircase from the bottom. Um, from the back of the Borgay, no, the Popoli Plaza. Yeah. And, you know, like really had no idea. You can't see up there, obviously. It's too high. So we, we're walking up this, the stairs and then there's a bit of a path. And the first thing you come across is really like a viewing platform. Yeah, that's uh, Pincio, okay. which is the Pincio uh, Terraces. Yeah. yeah so, and that looks back over the city of Rome. Correct. And as we said, it's the highest point. So the views are 
spectacular, right? Yeah, and it's almost like it's adjacent to St Peter's Dome. So yeah. it's, yeah, it's pretty spectacular. Yeah, obviously I've got photos, what we're talking about, you know, with the, the gardens and also the, the plaza. Um, this is episode 67. But apparently Rome has, like I've heard two numbers, 900, 1,000, a lot of churches, right? See. Yes, yeah, and when you're up there at this, the, the what is it, the Pincio? Um, Pincio, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like count the domes. Sure. Yeah, and you, the, every church has a dome, and and it's pretty impressive to to see. But obviously, St Peter's Basilica stands out as uh, the biggest. You can you can find that easily, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. So once you're taking the views, you sort of look around, and and the green trees and the grass just go on forever. You know, and you just think it's this one sort of spot and you, you you walk along the paths which are lined with statues and shady trees and there's cafes and then that you sort of cross a little road and there's another whole area and then you cross another road and there's another whole it's area. It's huge. Like there's so much. So gardens is probably not the best description because, um, you know, there's there's galleries and temples and zoos and you tell us what's there. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. I think um, if we... Probably Leon and I, or Leonita, should I say, and I probably let ourselves down. We thought we were just going to see uh, a nice garden. It was unbelievable. It's mm. got a the zoo bioparko. Yeah, um, a zoo. Like yeah, a that's whole a zoo. zoo. And they've got lions, tigers, birds, mm. um, bears, mm. and reptiles. And it's um, open from 9.30 to 6. Yeah. And it's 16 euro for adults and 13 for kids. Uh, there's the Globe Theatre. Uh, That's where you can uh, see opera. Yeah, yeah, you see the opera. And it's a replica of Shakespeare's open-air Globe Theatre. Yeah. Uh, there's also an outdoor movie. Yeah, outdoor at cinema. At the Casa del Cinema. Sing. And there's also Casino de Raffaello, and that's a kid's play centre. It's also a, a library and bookshop. Yeah. Um, and we we know none none of this. No. There's also the Temple of Asclepius. Asclepius stands on an yeah, artificial island. It's, on, a, it's arm. on an island in the middle of the lake. There's yeah. a lake. Yeah, yeah, it's a lake, and and actually you can hire rowboats, and and then you know the spiel says you know fabulous photos, which yes. I'm sure you got <laughs> some fabulous photos. So that that's that's the and it's the like your, your standard temple with your columns at the front, and oh, it looks magical. It's right on the water's edge. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got um, the Piazza Siena. Um, yes. Now, that's just a, a huge square, and uh, they used to have um, concerts there. Oh. I'm not sure whether they still do now, but it's huge and it's beautiful. It's green. Like, it's yeah. it's it's amazing. And you can also see some um, pretty spectacular art at the Borghese Gallery, right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, you've got... Uh, that houses an impressive collection of Baroque, Renaissance and Roman art. Yeah. It houses paintings and sculptures such as Apollo and Daphne, David with the head of Goliath's paintings, oh. mosaics by Bernini, Caravaggio and Raphael. Yeah. You can book the tickets in advance. Um, because you have to actually because mm -hmm. you have uh, there's a set entrance time. Mm -hmm. Uh, the book online tickets are twenty seven euro. It's open from nine till seven uh, every day except Monday. It's closed Mondays. But yeah, like it's uh, so there's a lot up there. Like it's incredible. Like you just and it just you just keep walking and walking and it it's actually quite flat on the top. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah. there's no effort at all. But we saw all sorts of yeah. I was just about to say. Uh... You know, we're walking along the roads. I mean, obviously, my priority was to find someone to have a coffee. And so there's a um, there's cafes. There's not a lot, but you know, there's a few cafes and restaurants up the top, and you know, right in the beautiful shot under the shady trees. And while we were sitting there having a croissant and um, a, a coffee, croissant yeah. and coffee, uh, we could see all these uh, families riding past on uh bikes but not individual bikes you know they were tandems or yeah sure you know, they, some of them had like a little canopy and they were just riding around the park now there's no vehicles inside the inside the park no. so it's pretty safe until oh you has not there i still remember seeing golf carts uh oh. yeah maybe the golf carts yeah yeah but there's no like it's not like a road that cars can drive through yeah. until you get you've actually got to cross a main road 
because the park goes on so far, right? Yeah, and then you suggested we could get a tandem bike. Yeah. <laughs> and I thought, don't be ridiculous. But yeah. um, just get, just quickly going back to that, uh, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story about um, Cardinal Borghese now. Oh, that would be great. And how him and the, the relationship between Har- him and Caravaggio. Yes. Now, I know I'm obsessed with Car- Caravaggio, but that's you just got to put up with it. Caravaggio got actually quite ill and he was in hospital and he was in the pauper's area of the hospital. Right. So because he had no money. So... The cardinal oh. walked through, spotted it was Caravaggio. Yes. And knew of his, you know, fabulous artwork. So then the cardinal made sure that he got much better um, treatment. treatment. And then once he was better, he moved into the to the villa. Yes. And he, to repay the cardinal, right. um, Caravaggio did a whole bunch of paintings for him. Oh, that's so nice. that's where they got those ones right. from. Well, one other thing that uh, was in the gardens before we move on, I did mention the statues, you know, like the the paths were lined literally with statue after statue, like marble statue after marble statue. It also has a interesting, um, I can't remember the proper name of it, but it's a water clock. Yes, I do. And I know what the water clock it's is. It's a hydro something or other, isn't it? It's a hydro chronometer right and it was eight it was uh invented this was uh invented this was, and it was in 1873 yes and it works 24 hours seven 24 hours seven. how does it work tell like me 24 hours a day seven days a week well to be honest it it's it had like a revamp and got fixed and it's uh started working again uh in 2022 march 2022 oh i didn't know yeah, that yeah yeah but it's actually, and when you know, when you think water clock, you think, how does that? What is it? It's actually like a big grandfather clock, and it sits on a island inside the lake as well. Mm. And it works from the water, from the fountain, um, fills up things and, and makes it, you know, turn over, turn over. Yes, so, so it, it, it fills up cups and sure, that's. That's impressive enough, but the thing that was the most difficult was to get make it precise. Okay, so yeah. tell me. I don't know. Well, <laughs> don't know. I think it'll be trial and error. It'd probably be, trial I and think. error. But it's like this grandfather clock and it's and down the bottom of it, it's sort of covered in moss and it's in, encased in glass. So, yes, you know, it's it's pretty unusual to see a clock sitting in the middle of an island, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. I, think, um, I think the Borghese Gardens, are up there probably with some of the most beautiful gardens we've ever yeah. we've ever seen, yeah. and it and it was um full of full of history and and the views the were villas great. And there's other yeah. villas and there's yeah. galleries and there's formal gardens and there's huge green spaces and there's you know lots of play areas for kids and all that all that it's yeah it was it's and when we were there it was full of families you know so local families out enjoying their their weekend it was fabulous wasn't it? Yeah, was it a Saturday? think so yeah and it was and we were we were lucky again we jagged the perfect day it was a perfect day so continuing our exploration our our walk around rome we then left the reluctantly the borghese gardens and we sort of found the a really cool um exit didn't we yeah yeah the the, the it's called the uh, um the street that we went was the Via Vittorio Veneto, mm. and if, as you you walk through the Pisale uh, Brazil, um, which is uh, a simple travertine arch flanked by two semi-cylindrical towers, almost twenty meters high, and then that opens onto the Porta Pisciana, <laughs> uh, Pincia. Sorry, yeah, Pincia. That, yeah. I think Good. I got that wrong. Maybe um, the Porta Pinciana. So you're leaving the park and you can see these arches and it looks like they're on an old city wall, really, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, well, what? it is a gate of the Orion Wall and that was ah, built in right. 271 AD to 275 AD. Mm. Uh, the gate was built under the Emperor yes. Horianus mm. in the early 5th century, opens onto Via Vittorio Veneto and yeah. that was named after... I think the Second World War, mm. an actual one of the, the battles the Italians won. I okay, think. so just to you know recap, we're, we're losing, the, we're leaving the Borghese Gardens, and we've found these um, gates that we're going to go through, 
not that we knew where we were going. Well, we is, had no idea. No. So this is this is the great thing about you know exploring, and as you said, um, we came across Via Vittorio Veneto. Now, oh, a big deal. You're saying I I can hear you, but it was a big deal because Lyle and I were just like, are we in the movies? It, it was incredible. Yeah, it was just the most beautiful street. Yeah, it was quite a wide street. It wasn't really wide. Yeah, big tro- like trees, like massive magnolia trees with these gorgeous big perfume flowers on them. It's lined with the most beautiful restaurants. And Lyle's favourite saying is, <sighs> um, when we find somewhere nice, he's like, "Oh, this is the Paris end of yeah uh, of, of Rome." Um, we went past uh, Harry's Bar, which I'm like, big deal, but. That's where all the famous people, yeah, um, were eating. But just to back up a bit before we start telling you exactly what uh, the restaurants and things that were there, uh, the whole street has a bit of history. Do you want to tell yep, us a bit yep. about that? The, the street was built in the 1880s during a real estate boom. So they had real estate booms <laughs> back then. Um, I wish I'd have got in on that real yeah, estate yeah, boom. Yeah, yeah, So this was in the 1950s and 60s. It acquired international fame as the centre of La Dolce Vita. La Dolce Vita, the yeah, sweet yeah. life, The right? sweet life, that's correct, Leonita. Mm. Uh, when its bars and restaurants attracted Hollywood stars. Not, uh, the mm. film La Dolce Vita by Federico Fellini immortalised Via Veneto's hyperactive lifestyle, lights and crawling traffic. Some of the yes. Rome's most renowned cafes and five-star hotels like the Café de Paris, Harry's Bar. Oh, de Paris, you were right. Yeah, the Paris yeah. End. Yeah, well, ah. maybe, maybe. But it, it's, <laughs> Sorry, Harry's um, Bar. Yeah, oh, Harry's okay. Bar, yes. the Regina Hotel, Baglione, mm. uh, and the Western Excelsior Rome are located in the Via Veneto. The Embassy of the United States housed in the Palazzo Margherita is also a location on the avenue. Located now, on the avenue, yeah. Now, the reason why we took photos of Harry's bars is because I, uh, our godson, uh, Harry Jones. Uh, g'day, mm. Harry. Um, so yes. we took, we saw Harry's bar. And then, so this morning I looked up what the significance of Harry's bar is. Well, in that film. Um, La Dolce Vita. Yeah. Um, Frank Sinatra plays the piano. And so it's a pretty big deal. And and he used to do that anyway, like in, in real life, you know, people mm. like, you know, Hollywood stars back there, Ava Gardner and yeah. uh, Marlon Brando and, you know, and uh, old Frank Sinatra used to quite often get on and uh, tickle the ivories in that particular but hotel. What was interesting is we had no idea about this street. You know, no, it wasn't no, no. like we'd, we'd done research or someone said you've got to check out that street. We just, you know... what left left the gardens at the right place and just were just blown away by how beautiful it was and um it said that it was you know it was immortalized as you know lots of cars and busy but the day we were there it was not like that at all there's this beautiful big wide street and yeah you know i sort of was crossing over taking photos of the restaurants covered in flowers and then i was back over this side taking the there was like a big it's not like a straight street either like it, it start the top of it is and then it does this huge big sweeping turn you know yeah. like in the buildings you know um like curve around with it yeah don't they like the stone the big yeah, stone yeah. buildings and the trees sort of follow the path around and yeah yeah it was it was beautiful really. yeah, yeah. And look it, go and have a look at the photos that, yeah uh, it's hard to do it justice because yeah. you know as we said earlier, the first thing we both looked at each other and went, are we in a movie? Yeah. Like it was just so beautiful. But then uh, but the piazza uh, it finishes. Yes, so and, we get down the bottom. It's not that long, you yeah, know, like uh, 500 metres or so. And then, which is Piazza Barberini. Yeah, so it finishes at Piazza Barberini at the bottom. Yeah, and, and that um, was built in 1625 on the orders of Cardinal Francesco Barberini yeah. uh, is and and um, if you haven't seen it, like so, you'd think, okay, this is pretty impressive. You get down the bottom, and there's a massive and big fountain in the middle yeah, of this yeah. square. In the center of the square stands the Fountain of Triton, sculptured Triton. in 1643. Four dolphins hold up Triton God and the sea as the marks the yeah. jet of the uh, seashell. Sea, right, yeah, it comes yeah. out of the seashell. Yeah, I've got uh, again by Benini. Benini. He was a busy, busy, busy man. All right, here's here's a challenge, you know, listeners. Uh, Lyle says dolphins. I know they're dolphins. Apparently, 
Um, but go and check out the pictures because I reckon they look much more like a giant fish than a dolphin. Anyway, that's my, my point of view. But, yeah, it's pretty impressive, the shell and the water coming out the top and um, you sort of back into the reality then. Listen, but if Bernini did it, it's... It's a dolphin. The, the, okay. He, he, this is a guy that <laughs> bloody designed the, the St Peter's Basilica, so okay. he All knows right. what he's doing. All right, yeah. And then a short distance from the square is well, the Palazzo... Uh, Barberini. Oh, Barberini. That's what uh, we just Baroque did. A palace that houses oh. the Gallery Nazionale d'Arte Antica. Right. So we're just still walking, right, at this sure. stage, yeah? And um, we obviously, we were actually going to meet up with some friends, you know, a bit later on for, for lunch. So we sort of had a bit of an ending point where, where they were, but we didn't know how, you know, where we're going to go on the way. And so after we've has walked down this beautiful big, you know, movie sort of street and seen that, at the bottom, the big fountain, Benini fountain with Triton and the dolphins, um, we find another piazza. Yeah, at the end of Via Veneto, we turned onto a Quattro Fontane, uh, then onto Via del Quirinale. Now, the <laughs> Quirinale. <laughs> Quirinale. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's got it. I, yeah. I just love watching you, yeah. your face. Quirinale Palace. Yeah. I'm going to start using my hands like all the Italians do. Um, now, at the end, yeah, so. The Quirinale Palace and yeah, Piazza, yeah? Is an, an historical building and yeah. currently the official president residence of the President of the Italian Republic. Yeah, so, and it's. It's a huge building and it's got the Italian flags and other flags hanging up above it um, and there's soldiers and security people all around the, the outside and you get a bit of a look inside. You can see some of the big hallways and things like that. Um, and then out the front of that is a big piazza yep. with, with uh, another fountain. Yes. <laughs> and yes. this one's um, even bigger. Yes, it's uh, the Piazza Quirinale <laughs> is the Fountain dei Dioscuri. Right. Uh, op- uh, yeah, so that's opposite the palace. and uh, It's got horses on it and a column in the middle and, yeah, it's massive, yeah? Yeah, uh, it's, um, <laughs> you've thrown me out. Sorry. The fountain and the obelisk, yeah, obelisk. with the prancing statues there of Castor and Pollux yes, stands Pollux. in splendour in the Piazza Mm, the statues are over 5.5 metres high. Mm, the massive. statues originally stood in front of the bars of Constantine. Ah. It is a beautiful fountain which has, which has a massive granite basin, mm. you know, so which encloses yeah. the, the, the area, which was once a cattle trough in the <laughs> Forum. It's huge, but that's true. It was a cattle trough in the Forum. So you've so. got this big marble base. You've got the prancing you know, horses, and then you've got, guess what, another Egyptian obelisk in the middle of this fountain out the front of the historic building where the president of the Italian um, Republic lives. Yeah, so the... the, And I've never heard of any of that either. Yeah, so the the, the actual uh, statue is the Dioscuri, and that's uh, a mythical uh, story again about twin half-brothers. I don't know how you have twin half-brothers. Uh, together known as Dioscuri. So, oh, twin half brothers known as Dioscuri. So, it's, it's not a bad walk we've been on so far, is it? Yeah, well, the palace yeah. is open to the public on oh. Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays for those with reservations. Tours begin at 9 30 a.m. until the last entry at 11 a.m. So, so you can go in and have a look. It was designed as the summer residence for Pope Gregory the 13th in 1573. The palace became the royal family residence after the unification of Italy and Italy had become a republic. The palace became the presidential home in 1947. Well, that's fabulous information. Thank you for that. Well, well, we've had a pretty good walk so far and uh, it just kept getting better, right? Yeah, this is the thing about Rome that we found is that you don't even know where you're going. And every <laughs> corner you turn, there's just something there that just blows your mind. So, yeah. so and now just near this. Um, well, from sorry, from, from the Piazza Quirinale, uh, there was a big sweeping staircase that um, went. Uh, Correcto. Uh, thank you. Um, it took us sort of down. And that was aligned with statues as well. That, that in itself was, you know, impressive. And you end up at? 
Fontana di Trevi. Oh, well done. So the Trevi Fountain is one of the oldest water sources in Rome, dating back to the ancient Rome since the construction of the Aqua Virgo Aqueduct in 19 BC uh, that provided water to Roman bars and the fountains of central Central. Rome. Okay, so we've come across the Trevi Fountain. Yes, and it was like a water source. Is what you're saying? Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. And it's from the aqueducts, and it's all worked on atm- atmospheric pressure. pressure. Uh, I mean, everyone's heard of the Trevi Fountain, and you know you have to go and see it. And it's bloody huge. It is huge. Well, how big is it? Okay, it stands uh, 26 meters high or 85 feet. Yep. And is approximately 49 meters wide or 160 feet. So you've got this big wall. And it's covered in this uh, sculpture, statues, uh, where the water comes out and comes down into the great big sort of pond, which is beautiful blue at the bottom. And as Lyle said, it's it, it's massive. It's like this big half semicircle area, isn't it? Look, it, it takes your breath away, to be honest. But it's funny, you know, like when we were doing the research for this, I was, I was trying to think actually what, what mm. are the statues? Mm. And I really, I think I was more blown away by the size of it and the water rather than what the statues actually are. And anyway, I, so I had, I had a look. At its centre is Pietro Brassi's statue Oceanus, who stands atop a chariot pulled by seahorses and is accompanied by tritons. The fountain also features statues of abundance and health. They're on each side of the actual uh, the chariot. Wow, um, Okay. okay. Uh, now, the interesting thing for me, because there's also a building behind it. Yeah, so it's on a wall of a building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and I, and, I, and I thought, I now know what that building was. Ah. And it all, it's like it all goes together. So, and then I found out it was, it's the Palazzo Poli, hmm. is the palace that was altered in the 18th century to form the backdrop of the Trevi Fountain. The Conti family was responsible for many extensions and renovations, including demolishing the central portion of the building before 1730 to allow for the building of the Trevi Fountain. So they took half the building out to build the fountain. Yeah, yeah. which were probably, in, you know, in hindsight was probably a pretty smart move. But Because most fountains you see are, you know, like freestanding. You know, you can walk all the way around them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is like it's... You can't. It's it's it's, it's a wall. And seriously, it's, it's unbelievable. And mm-hmm. so in 1730, yes. Pope Clement the twelfth helped a contest, held a contest, to redesign the fountain and Roman-born architect Nicola Selby was awarded the project. So it's important to, I think, to let people know who actually designed it. Yeah. So, um, but look, at yeah, look, it's, yeah, so it's the, the world's the, world's most famous fountain, let's face it. Yeah, so, yeah. and it's it, it lives up to it. Yes. And yes, it, it is busy, but there is lots, there's, everybody can get close enough to get a nice photo and go and have a look at um, the show notes that um, if on the player that you're listening on now, go to the description the pot then and there'll be a link to episode 67 uh, and you will see the photos that uh, I took of uh, the Trevi Fountain and even Lyle and I in front of the Trevi Fountain, which, you know, we're pulling some funny faces in those. Yes. Were we? Oh, is that when, when you made me do that? <laughs> she did. She yeah. did. Or whatever. Or whatever. I was really, I loved the Trevi Fountain and uh, that surprised me actually because I'm not, I don't like to do what everyone else does, but you just can't help, as you said, be be blown away by it, yeah. Um, but you got, yeah. But, you know, we're on a, we're on a mission to, to explore and we had to move on and we had one more stop to complete our loop, which we didn't know at the time, but we actually did this whole big uh, circle <laughs> and we ended up next, which isn't that far away, no, from, nothing's from, far away. No, from from the Trevi Fountain at Piazza Spagna. And what sure. is it, Piazza Spagna, Lyle? It is one of the most famous squares in Rome, mm. characterised by the famous Spanish steps, mm. the presence of an authentic Egyptian ancient obelisk. Another obelisk. And a beautiful obelisk. fountain by, mm. you guessed it, Gian Lorenzo Bernini. Another Bernini fountain. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so if you, you were if, quite impressed with the Spanish steps because there was a, um, 
Yeah, Wasn't there some sort of movie star or something? Well, I didn't see a movie star, no. But however, 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 um, before we go on to that, Lyle, tell me, like, um, okay, you've already brought that up. I'm gonna thank you for spoiler alert. Thank you. Sorry. That, that was my state of the end and listen to who the movie star was. And you've just, you know, gone there. Without... Okay, well, okay, stop. The, the Spanish Steps Thank built you. between, because <laughs> I get what you mean. Thank you. Uh, the Spanish Steps built between 1723 and 1726. Okay. Uh, there are 135 steps. Yes. Uh, on three different terraces, which is basically references the Holy Trinity. Mm. Um, now it represents figurative and metaphorically the close relationship between the sacred and the eternal city. Shown through the elevation and the vastness of the monument, the longest and the widest in Europe. New regulations set in 2019 make it illegal to sit on the steps yeah. with fines of up to 400 euro. Standing at the top of the steps is the 16th century Trinita de Monte Church, which was built using French funds having been commissioned by King Louis XII, sitting right next to the Villa Medici with a garden continuous with the larger Borghese gardens. Yeah, the, um, yeah so basically the French uh, built the church. Yes. Uh, a French diplomat actually commissioned the steps. Right. And it's called, well, okay, why is it called Piazza? Spagna? Yeah. Don't know. It's Should called, I know? Well, it's yeah, the Spanish steps that uh, and the Spanish um, square is because the Spanish consulate was at the bottom of the stairs. So does Spagna is that Spain in Italian? I guess so. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, there you go. There, huh. See, see. And it's not Perfecto. just it's not just one um, uh, flight of stairs. It's sort of three joined together. You know? Yeah. 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 So it's quite wide, but don't sit down, as you said. Right. Yeah. You're not allowed yeah. to sit there. Yeah. No. But. Yeah. And we we actually saw people being moved along that were sitting there having their lunch and that sort of stuff. So, but they've I, actually got people. Yes. You know, but I think one, another reason they were moving people along, and let's come back to that story that was nearly the uh, the spoiler alert was, um, there was a whole lot of activity happening. They were setting up all these looks like screens and sound equipment, and you know, and we're just like, oh, this looks exciting. What's going on here? Well, that night or the next day, um, it was the premiere of the new Mission Impossible um, movie and Tom Cruise was actually going to be at the Spanish Steps. So he, he was there in Rome at the Spanish Steps, just like we were. Hmm. Well, we were a day early. We were a day early. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, so that was uh, because, yeah. yeah, apparently the movie's all done Set all in Rome. Rome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Apparently, yeah. well, a girlfriend said to me, Oh no, Tom Tom Cruise has ruined Rome, and my husband hasn't been there yet. <laughs> so it must, <laughs> must must be pretty um, action packed. We'll have, we haven't seen it, so yeah. Um, so yeah, Tom Cruise, Mission Impossible at the Spanish Steps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and the she... Spanish Steps was only a couple of blocks from where we where we were staying. And if you um, looked up one street, the street where we had a little supermarket was on, whatever that street was. You can see the Spanish Steps, you know, like um, right at the end of that street, and that all the way up to that gorgeous um french church yeah look at nothing's no. like we've done a basically a a complete circle almost mm. of the city and we've seen all these magnificent monuments and it was it was like it took a long time because we we're all looking at stuff yeah. but the distance is not that far no although we did do a lot of steps that day so Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed our uh, walk around the streets of Rome and all the amazing things we've seen. Uh, Lyle, what was your favourite spot to um, in, a, in our walking tour? Um, oh, that's a hard one. Yeah. What sort of when you saw it, um, you were like, oh, wow, I didn't know that, or what was your, your highlight? Oh, uh, look, I thought it was all pretty good. I, but you've, for the wow, Trevi Fountain. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, damn you. Um, yeah, the, the, yeah. Um, the Trevi Fountain. But also, like, for me, I think the wow was being up the top of the Borghese Gardens with those views over the domes of Rome. 
Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty yeah. impressive, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I would love to have seen that at sunset. Yeah. Well, we've got a lot more on Rome to come up in in um, the next episodes as well, but we've hoped you've in, enjoyed this episode 67. So until next time, it's... Uh, Arrivederci. Goodbye. <laughs>